In this video, I want to talk about exactly how I plan and organize my content in Notion. I want to walk you through the templates that I use and the prompts that I use to help me to keep on creating and how I organize everything so that it flows. I get asked a lot about my content creation systems. It's something I've always sort of skimmed over in any Notion videos I've made before because I'm like, who would be interested in that? Apparently a lot of you are interested in that. So that's why I wanted to make this video giving you a comprehensive overview of how everything works in my systems. I've got a really good base for my system right now. Obviously, there are always little mini evolutions and little changes here and there, but this system has worked really well for me. I use almost solely Notion for content creation. So what you are looking at is my content hub. This is where I manage, I plan, I organize all of my content across all of the brands and all of the platforms. So it starts out with idea generation, and then we've got content creation, and then we've got the actual scheduling so what goes up and where it goes up you'll notice that this isn't just Michelle B content so I have Michelle B my YouTube channel I have intention which is my app I have life map collective which is my planner brand I've tried having content schedules for each individual brand it was a mess I wouldn't recommend it it just didn't flow it didn't work having everything amalgamated and in the one space for me to easily be able to access and create with is so much better it's what I would recommend to everyone if you do have multiple brands or multiple things that you are managing that require content put it all in the one hub don't separate it out because it'll just be too difficult to manage so the order of this page it kind of flows in the way that things would naturally flow so it starts with idea generation which is where all content kind of starts whether I'm on a walk or reading a book I might have an idea about a piece of content that I want to create and it will end up in one of these pages depending on what exactly it is so we'll look at the Michelle B video ideas page. So you can see on this page, I've got all of my ideas over one side and then I've got the actual schedule on the other side. So here it's presented as a progress board or a Kanban board and it starts with idea and it can be moved up the line. But generally everything that I use on this page sits in idea. So if I have an idea for a piece of content, I can just click the plus button, create new page, video idea. In here, I would put a brainstorm of whatever it is that's on my mind that I think that should be in this video. So if I am reading a book and I come across a concept that I'm like, oh wow, that would make a great part of a video, I would put the video idea in here and any of my thoughts I would chuck in here as a little brainstorm. What I have found over time is that ideas on their own are really great. <laughs> so if I have an idea for a video, wonderful, amazing. And at the time I might feel really inspired when I write it down, but if I'm looking at it three weeks later, I'll usually be like, oh, like I don't know what I actually wanted to put in that video or what was the whole purpose of that video? Why was I so excited about it? So actually having in it ideas of what I want to be inside of the video, a little brainstorm is really, really helpful when I actually take it from idea to creation stage. So the general rule is you don't put in an idea unless you've put some context, unless you've put some additional information about that idea within the page. So that's really the bare minimum of where something starts. It'll be in this little idea section. And then usually on a monthly or quarterly basis, depending on how I'm planning, usually monthly, I would hop in here and I could bring this idea over and chuck it on the schedule. So for example, if it was July and I was like, okay, I'm going to do some July content planning, I would take these, chuck them on my schedule. And that's sort of the first step from ideation to, okay, that's going to turn into something that I create. So I have that page for Michelle B video ideas. I also have an intention page. It's much the same, except it doesn't have a Kanban there. I've just got a list and I've also got Life Map Collective, which to be honest, I don't do too much with. I've got Instagram story ideas, which is similar in nature, but I don't schedule these ones out. They're just there. Um, scheduling Instagram stories is just a little too much. I feel like it's a bit more of an organic process with Instagram story ideas. But if I'm ever like, oh, like what should I post on my Instagram stories? I'm always thinking of little ideas to put up. So I can go into this page and be like, okay, I'm going to put that up. In there, I also will put links to TikToks that I like, that I want to repost on my Instagram stories, questions that I'm like, oh, I should ask that question on my Instagram story because I think that the answers would be really interesting, etc., etc. Down here, I've also got my feedback and praise gallery. So what you're seeing here is a bunch of praise for my app intention, as well as the life map daily or the life map weekly. These are usually just in the form of 
comments or Instagram posts that I try to screenshot and put in here because I do want to get into the practice of putting more social proof on my Instagram story. Promoting my stuff doesn't come naturally to me and so I've got this here as a prompt to be like hey you should be posting social proof because it's a really important part of owning anything and trying to sell anything. I do have an Instagram real TikTok ideas page. I don't use this Kanban board probably as much as I should. More often I'm ticking scheduled up and then I'm just calling it a day. So that might be something that I reformat eventually. But for now, I utilize all of these pages quite well in my content ideas section. And I find it really helpful to have the sections so that I'm not starting anything from scratch. This video is sponsored by Notion. Notion has helped me to manage my team and manage my work in ways that other apps just haven't been able to. Because you really have all of the tools that you need in one workspace. You have Kanban boards, you have calendars, you have tables, you have to-do lists, you have timelines, you have every tool that you might need in the one spot. You also do have the ability to embed things from other tools. So if you work with a platform like Figma or Google Drive or even Typeform, you can embed a lot of those tools within Notion so that everything is in the one space. Collaborating with a team in Notion is so easy. You can collaborate in real time and you can also just assign things to people, have the procedures stored in Notion so they know exactly what to do when. They really have everything that they need in the one spot. As you'll see or you have seen in this video, you can use Notion to organize all of the stuff that your team could possibly need, including wikis, procedures, checklists, project management, all within Notion. There's no tool overload because everything is in the one spot. Notion for individuals, for personal use is 100% free, $0 a month. If you do want to create your workflows in Notion, you can also add team members for $8 a month per person. Try Notion today using the link in the description down below. You can get started for free and then you can add your whole team. So then we have the content creation sections. This is where if I'm like, okay, I need to plan a video or I need to schedule out all of my Instagram posts for the next month, I would go here. I've got it broken up by brand. So there is a little bit of separation, but it's still all in the one place. So it's easy for me to get to. So on Michelle B, we've got Instagram post Michelle B. So I have this little example here for Emma, who is my virtual assistant and she does all of the scheduling. This is just to show her how I want things scheduled. And then usually you can see this is next month's batch of content, but it's only got photos and no captions there at the moment. I chuck all of this in here and then she would schedule it in later. We use later an Instagram scheduling app to schedule all of our content and all of these photos would already be uploaded into later. She would just hop into an image. This doesn't have a caption, but there'd usually be a caption underneath it. And she would copy and paste that caption and put it into later. So that's sort of how I work with her on Instagram posts. Then I've got my video content. So this is a page where I plan all of my video content. So if I'm like, okay, I need to write a video script. This is the page that I would go to. This is formatted in a progress board, but I also have all of the other views down here. And to make sure that I'm only looking at the content that actually needs to be planned, I would go ahead into the filter. And I've got a filter of where the publish date is on or after the exact date of. Right now it's July 1st, 2021, because we are in July. But next month I would move that to August 1st, 2021. And I would only see the posts that are set to be published past August 1st, 2021. And those would be the only videos that I needed to plan. If I didn't have that filter, I would see every single video ever that I've wanted to plan or I have planned or I have scheduled in here and it would be overwhelming. This way I only actually see relevant content. So right now you can see how I plan and organize my content is still in to be created. I didn't really write a script for this video, so I didn't get to those stages. We're gonna put it in written and that changes the status of this piece of content. This is the template that I use that I'll show you through later, but I have all of these status options that indicate where I'm at with the video. I'm not very diligent about updating them, I'm gonna be honest, but they are helpful and I often update them sort of post doing things and it tells me where things are at. The main times when my status is helpful is usually when I've handed it over to someone. So I might've handed it over to Amy, my editor, my sister, or Emma, my virtual assistant, or a brand and I'm waiting on it to be reviewed. I've got my newsletters page, which I actually need to schedule a whole new batch of newsletters. If you didn't know, I send out email newsletters every two weeks. They're usually just really simple newsletters. Newsletters do go on the big content schedule. So it would come with that same filter of July 1st and onward or August 1st and onward. I won't show you every single page. The only other page that's probably most relevant is all intention content, which is much the same as my video content. I've got so much content in here that I really 
want to get to planning. I've been adding so much stuff to intention lately, but much the same as with my video content, when I'm planning intention content, I'd hop in here. I'd look at my to be created. I'd start outlining and move it through the Kanban. And that is where I create my content. So what I like to do, what my aspirational goal is, is to have a content week at the end of every month. That used to work really well when I was just focusing on Michelle B content. Now that I'm also doing a lot of intention content, which is my app, I do find that one week is a little too short of a time and it gets a bit overwhelming. So it could just be I have a Michelle B content week and then I have an intention content week. But in those weeks, I can go to my content creation section and I know that everything I need is here. The next thing that you'll see on my content hub is my schedule of events. And it displays a timeline of all of these little events that I'd like to plan in. So this is actually brand new and I don't want to talk to it too much because it is brand new. I like to let things evolve before I really share them. But as you can see, these are just little events that I want to have either for intention, my app or for Michelle B. And this column contains the goal for each event. So this is very like businessy. It feels very corporate and I probably like to adjust the wording so it's a little bit more natural. But these are essentially the goals that every event that you have in your business, your YouTube channel, your content creation platform of choice should have. So it might be to reach new people. It could be to sell to newer people. It could be to onboard your people. It could be to engage people that are already in your community or it could be to keep people who maybe have lapsed or haven't watched your videos in a while or haven't bought something from you in a while. So it's a little clinical, the wording, but it addresses all of the stages that you should be targeting your customers at, which I really like. Then you have your content schedule. So you've kind of seen this already in the content board, but this is just the big old schedule of when things are going up where. So as you can see, I do chuck in reminders from time to time. I also have these on my normal calendar, but it's just my memory. We need extra reminders. So send Notion video for review. That's for this video. Now for my content hub, I do use templates. I rely really heavily on templates. I think that they're kind of essential if you're going to be planning content. Templates and systems create momentum. I think you need them within your workspace if you are creating content because otherwise you are just starting from scratch every single time. You don't have something that's guiding you through and making things easy. Templates are an absolute godsend. So this is my Michelle B template. Here are all of the properties that I would usually fill out for a new Michelle B template. So publish date, I usually wouldn't put this in here. I'd be dragging things into the content calendar because I find it easier to do it visually. Assigned to, so I have a few people that I work with that I could assign this to. So I could assign it to Amy when she is editing. I could assign it to Emma when she's doing all of the uploading bits and pieces. I've also got sponsored. This is where I pick my sponsor, whoever's sponsoring the video, if there is someone. I pick my brand, I pick my content type, and there is my status. While I do have a status of scheduled, I also have this little scheduled slash up, very much personal preference, and I don't think that everyone would want this, but sometimes when I'm in my content schedule, I just find it easier to tick the scheduled and up button, and then later on, if I want to, I can change the scheduled status. So down here is my video brief, and this is what I start with with every video that I am planning. Up here, we have content ideas, thoughts, and potential. So this is where I get my creativity flowing. How much I utilize this section is very dependent on how much material I already have for a video. So I could already be working with a ton of notes that I've taken earlier, a brainstorm I've already done, a bunch of ideas that I already put down. And I may not need to use this section all too much at all, but I may also have a video where I've written down one or two notes, but I'm like, yeah, I, I want to work on that one. And that's where this becomes really helpful. So it starts with a question storm. This is a little unusual, but it's something I've started doing in the past few months and I found it so helpful when I feel like I have no ideas on my mind. So a question storm is something I've talked about quite a few times. I also have a question storming activity on my app intention. This basically is about writing down as many questions as you can think of related to the topic at hand. So for example, if I had a video that was around how to plan your week, I might be asking questions like, what's the most efficient way to plan your week? How do different types of people need to plan their week differently? Etc. Etc. Sometimes I can go upwards of 20 questions. All that really does for me is start getting my mind to generate ideas. I found that whenever I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't think of a single thing to write about this topic. If I do a question storm, my head is filled to the brim with ideas. And that's where I usually start popping a bunch of ideas in here. So I'll be writing out questions in my question storm, and then I'll be chucking idea after idea in my brainstorm ideas section. So then we've got the critical question. So this is really helpful for um, generating ideas for 
for a thumbnail. So what are you trying to get them to do? What action could demonstrate what you want them to do? What will life look like before and after taking action on this video? It also gives you a lot of clarity around the direction of the video. You have a really strong focus after answering all of these questions. Then I've just got a quote storm and a case study section. Oftentimes when I am thinking of a video idea, I can already think of a whole bunch of quotes that apply to that particular video. And I have a big quote log somewhere in my notion that I pull from. And I like to include and elaborate on quotes within my videos. Case studies is much the same. Oftentimes if I have a video idea, I can think of case studies that I've read in the past and I'm like, oh, that would be relevant here. Then on this side, you've got title ideas. So any content creator knows that a title is one of the most important things that you can decide on when you are uploading a piece of content. That's why it's important to generate a lot of title ideas and then pick the best one. So I think I've got maybe 10, 15, perhaps 20, I'm not sure. A whole bunch of sparkles, which indicate title ideas. So you'd fill this up with all of the title ideas until you found one that felt the most clickable. Titles are something that I've really struggled with because I want them to be indicative of what the video is about, but I also want them to be something that people will click on and finding a nice balance between those things is really hard. So I also have this little get inspired tab that I'll sometimes use if I'm like, oh, I really can't think of a title idea. These are all like classic titles that you'll see around the internet that people do tend to click on. And then I've got stuff that I focus on on my channel. So then we've got thumbnail ideas. So I'll put a few image ideas here as well as text ideas that I might want to put on the thumbnail image. I've actually started getting into the practice of bulk taking a whole bunch of thumbnails. And that's probably my favorite change that I've made recently to my whole workflow. So this becomes a little less relevant and some might argue that's a terrible idea because I often take these thumbnails not knowing what videos they are going to apply to. But for my sanity, I find it really helpful. I don't enjoy taking thumbnails and having like a bulk batch of thumbnails just ready where I can drag one in that feels relevant to the video. It just makes my life so much easier. And I try to make sure that all the thumbnails that I take are still interesting on look interesting to click on. I do have a little get inspired section. We've got some Matt Diavella, of course, as well as thumbnails that I absolutely would never make my thumbnails look anything like. But you've got the, you know, person to thing or thing to person, make the person ask why, you've got showing emotion. What I really struggle with in thumbnails is a lot of thumbnails that people demonstrate as successful are thumbnails like this, which I'm like, I get why someone would click on that. But could you ever imagine me creating a thumbnail like this? No, <laughs> it's the exaggerated facial expressions for me. I'm like, I could never. Someone that I find does the emotive stuff quite well, but it doesn't look super cheesy is Matt Diavella. Like all of his videos you can see you know he's looking pensive but he's not looking like a little insane and I'm not saying that's a bad way to do things it's just that it doesn't work for my kind of content so this is just a bunch of inspiring examples for my thumbnail ideas then on the other side this is more of the like taking action stuff you've got my script I've got some helpful notes visit the sponsor list for information on each sponsor so I do have this sponsor list so this is my sponsor list I've let out a lot of the information because it's private information that I wouldn't be able to actually provide. But this is information for Emma, who does a lot of the sending of my videos to sponsors for their review. And it's also information for me because I often do that as well. So it says who to send the invoice to, who to send for review to, the rate per video to chuck on the invoice, and then contract expectations. That's usually the length of the current contract that I have with that particular brand. And then what to put in the description. So just helpful information when it comes to getting that video uploaded and reviewed. Then you've got the video script. So this is where I would usually put the script of the video. My script section isn't super fancy. I just segment it up by usually like my point or the section of the video. I've got a whole b-roll to create sections. So what I try to do at least is when I'm putting together a script to a video, I'll try to think of b-roll for that script and then I'll put it into the b-roll to create table. And then when I'm batching b-roll, I'll create all of that b-roll. And then down here, we've got more of the nitty gritty video details. So there's the video editing checklist. This is for Amy. Does Amy need to use this at this stage? Probably not, but I also find it really helpful to just have here. This really takes someone from point A to point B when it comes to taking a bunch of footage that I've handed someone and turning it into a Michelle B video. So it literally starts with setting up your Final Cut Pro event and it ends with uploading 
it to YouTube. So Amy will usually, once I've reviewed a video, upload it to YouTube with absolutely no detail in it. And then you've got the video upload checklist, which is what Emma uses to get the video details all published and in the video. So every single step of this process has detail to it. So if you click on any of the steps, you click open. In that page will be detail on how to actually action that particular part of the procedure. So you'd go through that. Then there is the final upload details. So I usually chuck my final thumbnail here. Sometimes my title is different to whatever I put up here because I've done a title brainstorm. So the reason I put this here is because I only want to look at one section of this whole page when I am assigning it to Emma to get all the upload details in. I don't want to be like going from here to here to here to make sure everything's correct. And that's why I've got everything in the final upload details. I've got a short description, which I usually write. We've got like a line to max and then other details. So things that I've mentioned within the video, Amy will usually put that in. Then Emma will add links when it's actually up on YouTube. And that is my video template. And it's absolutely essential when it comes to getting content created. I don't think that I could do it without that template. Or if I did, there'd just be a lot more friction. I do also have an intention content template, which is really much the same. It's just got a little less in it. So oftentimes the title ideas probably aren't such a biggie in intention because it's usually people that, you know, they want to be there and they want to take action on these pieces of content. We've got my script, we've got my upload details, which are a little bit more in depth. Uploading intention content is a little bit more difficult. And then we also have my email newsletter, which is absolutely nothing special. I believe this is just text. Yeah. So this is the general format of the Life Notes newsletter, which is the newsletter that I send out every two weeks. And that is my content hub. That is how I get my content from idea to on the schedule to uploaded. The other page that I heavily use in collaboration with my team is the knowledge base. I'll quickly walk you through this because this might be a little less interesting if you don't have a team, but if you have a team, you might be like, yeah, show me the details. So I created this when I started properly hiring. I was like, I really need a space that has all of the instructions on how to do all of the things. That way there's less responsibility on my shoulders to always have to explain how to do things. Having everything captured is so much easier. Often my communication is in the form of a video like this one, or it's sending someone a page in Notion that is captured on this knowledge base page. So at the start, you've got your roles and responsibilities. I'll show you Amy's because she won't mind me showing you that. So this is Amy's page where she goes to when she's like, okay, what do I need to do this week? On here, you've got your weekly task checklist, which is just all the standard weekly tasks that Amy does. And then there is the videos ready to edit or in editing. So something appears on here if it's been assigned to Amy. So you can see here that this says that it's assigned to Amy. That means that it's ready for her to edit and get it ready to upload. And then we've got B-roll to film. So because Amy edits all my videos, often she's like, I really need this B-roll. Like you have no videos of you sleeping. I need them. <laughs> and she will put that in the B-roll to create table. That way, when I am doing any batch B-roll filming, I know what I need to create. I have that kind of page for any role, any person that I work with because it makes things so much easier. Then I have all my procedures, guides, and templates, and these are interlinked so much. So you've got all the procedures, guides, and templates for all of the brands. Once again, I've realized that having everything amalgamated is much easier than separating everything all in the one place works better, at least for me. So if you click to expand Michelle B procedures, guides, and templates, you've got all of the different sections and all of the different procedures. I won't bore you with this too much, but basically you'd click open on a particular procedure. Usually this is the format you'd get. So it tells you what you'll learn to do, what you need to do it, and any helpful extra information. And then you've got the actual procedure checklist, which looks like this. So, so I have procedures on just about everything. And I try to, if I start doing something new, create a procedure for it. Aside from that, the only other things that I kind of use are my intention main page. And this is really more about my branding. So we've just got the purpose of intention, uh, personality traits. So my graphic designer actually put those together, imagery resources, core beliefs, just important stuff when it comes to reminding me what the core of the intention app is all about. And very similar for Michelle B, but a little less stuff. This probably needs to be cleaned up a little bit, but just all of these core things that are more about branding than they are about content creation. Everything else kind of sits in this content hub. And this is where I mainly will be visiting when it comes to content creation and organization. If you liked that video, you might like my other Notion videos where I've walked through all of my different workspaces, not just for work, but also for my personal life. I'm going to have my Notion video 
playlist linked on the screen and in the description down below. I appreciate you guys so very much and I will see you soon.